Wes, we're back. We're here for the FPL Double Up podcast. It's been a crazy week, or kind of the opposite of that, a very boring week, one or the other. But FPL hasn't, well, nothing's happened, but everything's happened. Crazy week. Yeah, it's been absolutely nuts because, like you said, nothing's happened. We've both got very small green arrows, I think, John, just by not taking a minus four. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been obviously game week seven was wrote, written off, but now all sorts is going on. Three games off this week. Arsenal City off in game week twelve. Lots of people wild carding. Lots of people wish they like me, wish they still had their wild card. Um so yeah, it's yeah. gonna be a fun stream. Yeah, with all the conversations to come, we are gonna be drafting a wild card team a bit later in the stream. We're gonna talk about all the decisions about whether you should or shouldn't wild card. That's, that's what all the content this week's really going to be about because it's what everyone's looking for. I mean, I think half the game's probably thinking about wildcard at this stage, at least of the engaged managers. A lot of us were targeting yeah. next week. Our hand has been forced. But just as a wee opener, you already popped yours. Have you been royally shafted? I did. I've been okay. If a few more games got called off, I would have been in a lot of trouble. But a couple of Arsenal players, there was talk of Brentford being off, wasn't there, Brentford Arsenal? Um for a minus four, I can get to 11 players. Um, uh, nice little sip of tea there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got, uh, yeah, I've got 11 players for a minus four. A couple of, obviously, like the bench players like Nico Williams and Andres Pereira, but I'm hoping it's like a low scoring week or I can just scrape by with a minor red arrow um, and it shouldn't be too bad compared to the wild carders. So, yeah. Um, yeah, bit uh, not too badly screwed over. Like I said, if there was like five or six games off without a wild card, I'd have been probably forced into a free hit. And as I've been causing some controversy on Twitter by trying to get an extra free hit this week, which have, uh, people have been crying about, which has been good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, not not too bad. I assume you have, which is why you're planning on wildcarding? Yeah, I'll be wildcarding. Um, and to be honest with you, I've been, I've been human in hand. You know, I knew I was talking to Bakari yesterday, talking to you today. There's the Green Arrow, obviously, in the channel tomorrow. I'll be interested to hear their thoughts. And then I was planning on just submitting and doing my wild card at the deadline on friday but part of me is thinking i should really be popping it early because there are going to be values rising over the week as everyone gets in newcastle guys and the man city yeah. guys and whatever else so i think i might to be honest with you off the back of this uh, when we're done streaming because it might be a bit hard my, i'm not that dexterous getting all that <laughs> stuff going to do it right now but as soon as we're done i think it's time it was on a night duty last night so we bit tired hair's a bit scruffy but you'll have to forgive me so wes i think i think where we should start maybe is like why should people wildcard? Who should wildcard? It's very hard. I asked Bacar this yesterday as well. And it's mm. around this sort of topic of, you know, some people will be able to get out 10 players with a minus four, but two of those players might be like an Andreas and an Nico Williams and yeah. a Ward even. And they're sitting there thinking like, oh, you know, is this good enough? I suppose what is good enough and what is pop your wildcard? Yeah, exactly that. So it is all about how many players you can get out for a minimal hit. If you've already, if you've got your wild card in hand, don't be afraid to use it. We get the second one in the later half of the season. We get the unlimited free transfers in game week seventeen. We have to use this first one by game week sixteen latest. So there's no value, in, no value in holding on to it too much. So yeah, don't be afraid to pop it. If you're sitting there and thinking, like you said, you've got Ward, you've got a couple of bench players that haven't come in, and you're looking at a minus eight just to get 11 players, then use your wild card. If you can get a decent 11 out this week and you want to save your wild card till next week so you can choose from you know Chelsea players, Liverpool players, et cetera, et cetera, that also makes sense. But yeah, don't detriment yourself this week just to save a wild card for the sake of saving it. Oh, and just quickly, using a wild card is definitely preferable to using a free hit. The free hit, we only get one per season rather than the three wild cards. Um, and yeah, that free hit when it's going to be like, there's going to be black game at 29, I think. There's going to be big doubles later on in the season, especially with all these postponements to now add in. So yeah, save your free hit and only really use your free hit if you haven't got a wild card and if you're completely screwed this week. Yeah, that, that's the thing. I was going to ask you about the free hit next. You've pretty much said it in a nutshell. It, I think for a lot of newcomers to the game, maybe they mightn't realise just how valuable that is late season. So it's it's like one of those hold it just hold it don't 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 do it don't do it unless you absolutely is there a reason you would do it like who does it yeah so if you've got a wild card don't even think about the free hit if you're shafted use your wild card if you haven't got a wild card and you are really shafted let's say you've got Rashford Dallow um, three Liverpool three, yeah three Liverpool a couple of Chelsea Zaha Zaha three Brighton people have got that sort of scenario uh, then yeah look at it and use your free hit and then later on in the season you'll have to try and juggle 
the blank gamut 29, I think it is, without your free hit, which will be difficult. But yeah, if you're completely shafted, that's when I'd use it. If you can get nine or 10 decent players out and just play with that for a minus four, something like that, then just survive this week, take the L, take the minor red out and hope for a minor red arrow. You're still going to have Haaland as captain, so that's going to be fine with everyone else. You can still get the most of the... What I've found with my team is for a minus four, I can scrape 11 and I can cover off a lot of the big hitters that are going to be in people's wild cards. And then it's kind of the fringe players where people will have sort of better fringe players compared to my, like, Patterson and uh, Andreas Pereira. But I'm hoping maybe the fringe players for you, John, blank this week, and maybe mine blank as well, so we kind of even each other out. That's what I'm hoping as a non-wild carder. You have here, you sent through in the notes that in game week 12, Man City versus Arsenal is off. Yeah. Um, so don't get too many now. We're going to have to plan to move off them. I think, I think thankfully a lot of people aren't really targeting the Arsenal assets in a wild card. They're yeah. going for like a Martinelli. Uh, yeah. But outside that, I know like up top, people are kind of drifting away from Gabriel Jesus, bringing yeah. in the likes of the, the Tonys and the Isaacs and the Mitrovic's. Um, but that game being off, you know, a lot of us will be going triple city, Kevin De Bruyne, Haaland and Cancelo, the kind of triple yeah. up of, of, of choice i think this week what's the story there when you say don't get too many now you have to plan to get rid of them is or move off them i suppose even if we're not going to miss and there's so, a builder outside my house i don't even know if people can hear it can you hear it no i can't hear it get him in oh, get him in these mics are what you should do different. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah basically around that what, what are you thinking like if you yeah it and, like, how much is too much and how it's... much should we be planning it's really tricky. So the wild card that we'll get onto later does have the triple city that you spoke about, and it does have Martinelli. Maybe it's wise to tweak that wild card now and have some indifferent to Martinelli. Martinelli's fixtures aren't great anyway. Plus that blank, he was kind of in there. I drafted this before that news, thinking that you know Martinelli is still the best budget midfielder despite the hard fixtures. But now there is more of a reason to jump off. So yeah, there's maybe a replacement there. But a lot of the good budget midfielders aren't even playing this week, which makes it tricky. So there's no right in midfielders to choose from even leads like Jack Harrison players like that. So a lot of those budget similar price mids to Martinelli aren't available. So, well, not for this week, you could potentially carry one on your bench and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, for me, I think if you have four, it's okay because there's still a good four, tra- four free transfers to use before game week 12. And if you've got a solid bench, which you probably should do on your wild card, the likes of Nico Williams and Andreas Pereira both have a good fixture in game week 12. So I'd be happy playing Nico Williams in game week 12 and benching Haaland. Um, and I'd be happy using my, say if I do get De Bruyne this week. So if I'm not on a wild card, but I'm thinking about minus four in De Bruyne in. In game week 12, I could possibly switch De Bruyne back to Salah, back to Sterling, something like that. Mm. Um, and still have, so I can get, I can jump off my City assets soon uh, at that point, sorry. And then with Arsenal assets, yeah, I'll be looking to come off uh, Jesus and Martinelli over the next two or three game weeks for sure. With Champions League football, and then we're going to have the international break, and we're going to have all sorts of pauses and postponements and just uncertainty thrown into the mix. I suppose that bench is starting to become that bit more important. And, but the thing there yeah. is, again, the five subs are killing us. It's it's a completely different season. Yeah. Something I've been thinking with, and maybe I'm thinking about it arsewise, I'd be interested to see people's thoughts in the comments, is, you know, with the likes of the, like, so Liverpool, for example, Trent and Robbo would never have been rotated and subbed as much before because other positions yeah. would have been prioritised. Now, so. what we're seeing is Milner coming on for a wee Trent in the 65th minute, the 80th minute. Simicus and Robertson. Simicus is actually getting more game time. I think Robertson's picked up some sort of in- injury at the minute, actually. Right. But my point is, I'm just using them as an example, even everyone across the pitch, you have much more chance of getting subbed. So is the 60 minutes to get the second point. Now, should that be reduced in FPL terms? Because less people are less likely to have as many average minutes. The average minutes is reducing. Yeah. Do you, I don't know. It's just Maybe. something I was thinking about this week. But I, I think it's a very marginal. Yeah. Thing. And with, with Trent, he in his last Premier League game, I think it was against Everton, he was on for that clean sheet, wasn't he? And he gets hooked mm. on the 58th minute for Milner, like you said. And there's just no way that that's going to happen if it's not five subs, like you said. So that was a frustrating one as a Trent owner. And like most people have Trent. So yeah, it's a tricky one. And like you said, there's more chance of you're less likely to need your FPL bench because let's say your player in FPL is benched. Let's say Trent is benched, for example, one week. He'll probably get subbed on. Whereas in a normal season, if Trent's benched, he'll probably sit the, the whole game out. So yeah, I'm a real... Uh, I don't like the five subs rule at all. I don't know why they had to jump from three to five. If they wanted to increase it, why not jump from three to four? Mm. It seems to always be, oh, let's have three or five. Like At least compromise to go to four. But yeah, nothing we can do. About that one unfortunately 
No, I hear you. I've just seen a comment there about my voice being low. Might have just been for for Rami, but I've turned it up a bit. If it's too loud or whatever, better let me know. Um, so outside that, teams to target over the next couple of weeks. You know, is who have you got in mind? I think everyone's going for kind of triple Newcastle, triple City in in their wild cards. If you were maybe in your position, Wes, and you're making transfers and you don't have the luxury of the wild card, what are you prioritizing? Who are you getting in? Yeah, so. Outside of obviously the big teams where, where you can kind of bring them players in regardless of fixtures, the sort of lesser teams who I like would be Newcastle, Fulham, West Ham too. Um, so obviously from those ones, Bowen has picked up no goals and no assists so far this season, I believe, uh, in the Premier League. He took a penalty. Hmm. It's just gone out of my head what game that was. I can't remember. It was what, some midweek thing or something, was it? Or? Yeah, it, it wasn't Premier League. I can't remember what it, what it was now, but a lot of the big players for West Ham were on the pitch. Players like Rice, who who missed against Nottingham Forest, he's obviously not on them anymore. Bowen seems to be the penalty taker for West Ham. I don't know, maybe if Lanzini's on the pitch, he's... I think he's gone down in price to 8.1 from what, you know, he started season 8.5. So, yeah, I like Bowen. Um, I'm I'm on the fence with Bowen. Like, he's in the, again, spoiler alert coming up, but he's in the wildcard draft I've produced. But if someone wanted to argue with Bowen, I'd be more than happy to listen to that and say, you know what, you're right, there's better options out there because the form isn't there. But is the argument that the form isn't there, well, the form will come with these favourable fixtures mm. right up until sort of, um, yeah, I've looked at fixtures up until game week 16 because obviously that's when we all get put on that enforced unlimited transfers in game week 17. So yeah, don't need to look any further than that. And West Ham's fixtures are pretty good. I think they've got Liverpool in there as the only real hard fixture. Um, just quickly on Fulham and Newcastle, it's kind of obvious, but it's Mitrovic is um, not essential, but in my team, he's really heavily locked in. And if I was picking a wild card, it would be Haaland, Mitrovic, and then one of the forward. I'd debate it between Isaac, between Tony, etc. Um, I just wouldn't debate Mitrovic. And I wouldn't even debate Andreas Pereira either for my bench. I wouldn't start in most weeks, but I'd have him there as a really good first sub. With Newcastle, loads of options. St. Maximum. Hopefully someone in the comments can let us know what's the latest with his injury. But uh, even without that, you've got Isaac, you've got Tony. Uh, Tony. You can't hope and you've got tri- <laughs> Trippier. I don't know why yeah. I said Tony there. <laughs> Thinking of the Newcastle goalkeeper when yeah, I said Tony. I was trying to think if they have like a guy, Tony someone. There's probably a Tony Longstaff there. There's a few Longstaffs about. There's a, there's a few Longstaffs, yeah. <laughs> Tony did play for Newcastle. Maybe it was that. I don't know. But yeah, Pope, Trippier, St. Max when he's fit. Uh, Isaac, even we, we were writing off Callum Wilson, but when he's fit, maybe he comes back in and is the main man again. So there's loads of options to choose from at Newcastle. Yeah, I think when I when I look at Newcastle, it's like particularly with the defensive double up, love it. I, I just don't think I can get away from it right now. Um, yeah. And then up top, Isaac is obviously standing out. I'd love to have like a St. Maximum option or maybe a Bruno Gomares. I know he's playing deeper this season. I know they're both injured. That's the problem. I think it could be a bit more interesting because I think a lot of the kind of guys who are playing for Newcastle or have been, we're all just waiting to be replaced by these injured players. What about, here's a weird one, Almiron. Very, very yeah. different. He actually, very. I watched it, I forget which game it was. It's the last game they played the one before. It doesn't matter. Forget who they were playing. He didn't get any returns, but he, he looked decent. And he, yeah. it's just a bit different. I don't know, just throwing it out there. No, no, I like it. He's. I think he's only 5 million as well, which is obviously really cheap. So he's a nice option. If you did want, say, a, a stronger bench at the minute, because of these suspensions he could be the perfect sort of player for that bench that's sort of where we used to have Leon Bailey near the start of the season so yeah I like that and he scored against City didn't he with his like a diving thigh do you remember that goal against Man City yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from Almeron uh, so yeah I, I like it as a shout would I want to start him every week is he a bit inconsistent yes but can be it, that can be saying for any of the sort of mid mid to low priced midfielders no one's that consistent if they were they'd be you know essential slash much more expensive, wouldn't they? So, yeah, I like Almer. Very good. Well, Wes, look, it's time for us to go and have a look at a couple of differentials. We're starting to speak of them. Uh, so Lovely. on the screen now, I've got our long-term differentials. Um, we'll go in terms of like the least different to the most different, and two of these guys are actually tied. So we'll start off with Anthony Gordon. You've got him in here, 5.5 mm. million, 3.3% uh, ownership. Yeah, so Gordon surprised me. He's never really been that close to getting into my team. However, the fixtures are now decent. And if you look at some of the stats for Gordon, he's you know he's obviously got a few goals and assists whilst continuing to be overlooked by myself and everyone. Um, but yeah, when I was looking for that mid-price midfielder um, as a Rodrigo replacement, you know when 
when Rodrigo got injured, went on to hub, hub up to stats. And Gordon's there with like shots, shots on target, shots in the box. And then watching games as well, it's like Gordon's involved in everything from an attacking point of view that Everton do. So he's kind of that talisman figure that's going to be Everton's saviour if anyone's going to get the points. He's not going to really share the points. So I think at that price, he's a decent option. Like I said, I, I just can't see myself going there. I'm sort of anti-Everton. And maybe because he was 4.5 last year, it seems like a bit of a jump up. You know, other cheap midfielders have been doing it so far this season. The Brighton lads, the Leeds lads. So he's never been that firmly on my radar. But I think he could do well over the next few game weeks. I can't remember, remember their fixtures off the top of my head. But I think they've got a decent enough run up until game week 16. I can check it out here very quickly. Um, and then we'll move on to the next player. Who we got for Everton? We've got West Ham, Southampton, United and Spurs. And then we've got Newcastle, Palace, Fulham, Leicester, Bournemouth, Wolves. So a crack and run. Um, Wolves is actually in 17 so Bournemouth is the last fixture before the World Cup break so like yeah. the last four before the World Cup there Bournemouth, Leicester, Fulham and Palace is great a couple yeah. of nice fixtures in the next few with maybe United Spurs and Newcastle between 10 yeah. and 12 a bit of a hard patch yeah. Um, but yeah definitely worth considering uh, maybe there are better options around that price bracket but that's why they're differentials at the end of the day yeah. Madison down to 7.9 million um, has been for a wee while 3.3% also yeah do you know what I keep saying on streams, Wes? I think I said it to you last week. I keep thinking Brendan Rodgers is fired and he's been there. And I keep getting yeah. mugged off for it because I don't <laughs> yeah. know. I I, I seen I this, that. like, I got trolled, I seen on Twitter, like, two weeks ago, like, <laughs> Rogers sacked and it was like a fake Sky Sports News thing. And I said, geez, <laughs> yeah. I just took it as fact. And I keep telling everyone, Rogers is gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I remember that on the stream, uh, on our stream, like, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, or whatever it was now. Um, and I, I remember seeing the comments. I think I took... I couldn't keep up with it as well because there was all sort of rumours coming out that he was going to be... Bookies were like... People were tweeting saying, oh, the bookies are like... They changed the odds to like something crazy. And people were seeing odds of who the next early. manager was and he yeah. wasn't even fired yet. But yeah. anyway... He, he definitely he definitely wants to be sacked Rogers because obviously he gets a huge payout. He's... You know, all his best players have been sold. They haven't recruited anyone. He wants to get sacked. I'm convinced of that. And he wants the big payout. They can't afford uh, to though. <laughs> no, probably not. Apparently um, that's actually why I, I was. I really because I said it on another stream yesterday. Everyone in the comments was just saying they actually can't afford to like sack him. So, so he's going to stay. Anyway, there. so yeah, Madison, so this, which is that's all actually very re relevant because that isn't ideal for if you were to go for someone like Madison, which is why on that sort of that sort of price bracket for a midfielder on the wild card, I've actually chosen Bowen. But with Madison, despite all the crap that's gone on at Leicester so far this season. He's still returned okay. He's still taking corners. He's still got the ability to score goals. Leicester are scoring goals in most of their games, aren't they? They're just sort of, you know, they're losing 5-2 versus Brighton, 4-2 mm. versus Arsenal, two alls and stuff like that. So they're scoring goals. It's just defensively, it's a problem. So I don't think we should be put off Madison by Leicester's poor defence if they can keep scoring goals. Um, and just looking at Tottenham, it's tricky picking Madison this week, but obviously this is long-term differentials. And their fixtures after Tottenham are really good. Two newly promoted sides, Forest and Bournemouth. Then it's Crystal Palace. Then it's Leeds. Then it's Wolves. 14, it's Man City. And it toughens up a little bit. Um, but yeah, for the next out of the next six fixtures, if you discount Tottenham, they are really good. So keep Madison in mind. Maybe you don't get him this week. But from next week, he's got five plum fixtures in a row from yeah, game week nine onwards. I feel really bad for Brennan Rodgers. Because when you look at Leicester, right? And whatever, I know like whatever there's people who probably just don't like him or the way he's playing or his style or whatever he's doing but when i look at that team and that you think of them that they can score goals and you look at the defense over the last few years the big names they've lost through transfer the sheer yeah. amount of injuries the injuries don't seem to be getting Crazy. better and the lack of recruitment when you throw all those in how can you expect to keep clean sheets in the premier league yeah there's nottingham, no way like nottingham forest have probably recruited about eight more defenders than Done them. And they've got, and they've do, got on do, their books. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's like how 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 can they expect a team to compete whenever that's the scenario? But anyway, um, the next one, Bowen. Can I go on a rant about Bowen? Yeah, go ahead. Bowen's a trap. Go on. But I'm not the expert here. Bowen is a trap. I'm you sick are. of seeing him, and everyone's going to throw but penalties, and I get it. I really get it. How many penalties have West Ham won this year? I actually don't know. Maybe they've won eight, but yeah. I don't think it's that many. I don't even think it's two. I don't know is my point. He has blanked all season long. He's dropped 0.4 million in value. 
He's 2.9% owned and I think it's still too many. I'm going to eat my words when he scores a penalty at the weekend. But I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm not sitting on the fence in this one. He's been crap all season. We're yeah. l- listening to our, our last year's brains. And we're going, it's yeah. time, it's great, the fixtures, he's on penalties. Nah, not for me. West Ham just aren't it. There's yeah. better options for 8 million. But- I, that's that's all fine. And I think you've got valid points all around. Um <laughs> The only thing with Bowen is, like I said, we're thinking about last year's hat on, but is that a sign of his quality? Can that come back with better fixtures? Mm. Maybe, maybe not. He is getting, I think he does occasionally get subbed off early for, uh, was it Corne? Um Corne has signed for them, yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, I think they, they needed a goal against Knott's Forest, so it was a few weeks ago now, and it just made me think that, hang on, Bowen is actually getting subbed off here, even though West Ham need a goal, which surprised me. But, yeah, uh, it's, it's tough. Like I said, Bowen is the one pick out of my 15-man wildcard team that I've produced for this that I think I could be convinced off of him. And also, I've got a question for my own team this week because I need to... Uh, I either go for KDB in place of Sterling or I take out Gross and get someone like a Madison or a Bowen because I've got a few million in the bank. Um, or even Gordon, who's on the screen. But yeah, do I want to go... Would I actually put Bowen in my own team? I don't know. Um but yeah, we picked him for this long-term differential side and we're kind of now both going a little bit against him. But no, I'll, I'll stick I, on the team of Bowen just because uh, just to go against what you said. Can I let you know something interesting? In terms of XG, he's not even in the top 50 midfielders. In terms of XA, he's not even in the top 50 midfielders. Yeah. So yeah, now, he has... Again, the stats uh, prove what we've both watched with our own eyes in terms of he has been poor and he hasn't been involved for... West Ham is nearly as much as he was last season. Because think about how good he was last season in terms of goals and assists. Even right up until, was it the last game week when he scored a couple against Man City? Or a couple of game weeks ago, sorry. But yeah, he hasn't been at the races. West Ham have been really poor as a team, haven't they, in terms of the goal. They haven't scored many goals at all, especially not... I think they blanked... Uh, yeah, didn't score at all in the first three. Mm. Um, so yeah, there's you could easily build a case against Bowen. Is, are the, I am a manager who likes to see a check like... I like to see a little bit of something just before getting a player who has good fixtures. I want to see something from them. Um, but some people like to try and gamble before they see it yeah. and trying to predict, you know, are you too late? If you wait for Bro- if Bowen scores a brace this week, are you then too late to the party? It's, it's, it's one of those. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm with you on your argument. It's it's a solid argument. And what Do you know what, though? I've seen it. a nice thing here from Just a Dad Post and stuff, who's posted a few good comments about this one's basically saying, Bowen's just a perfect placeholder for Zaha in game week 10, which gives you cash for KDB to Salah. To look at him in isolation is to miss the point. I, I hear that. Like, if we're looking yeah. for an 8 million kind of placeholder that we're going to pivot and then take cash out of or do whatever, okay, if it's a one-week punt, all right, yeah, go for it. You know what, he's on penalties. Have, a, have some fun. Differential, all about it. But I don't know. Maybe it's me just being too simplistic or about it where I'm just kind of looking at it on the face of it and when I look at Bowen and I'm looking at those stats as I say not even the top 50 for XAXG in terms of XGI he's like 49th in terms of bonus point system I don't know I'm just picking random stats here off he's not even in the top 50 I'm just pulling random things out of the toolbox on fantasy football hub whereas Um, if you looked at if you looked at Gordon who I've who was first suggested I haven't looked in a couple of weeks but I'm, I'm pretty sure Gordon's pretty high up and that's despite playing some tough fixtures in there as well. Anthony Gordon, I've got him in here now. In terms of what are we talking well, here? He was Next. a couple of games ago. It just, I, I noticed he was having a lot of shots, a lot of shots in the box, a lot of shots on target. Yeah. Um, in terms again, of XG, price. he's the second midfielder in the game. Yeah. That that actually makes me look and go like you're wrong. Something's not right there. He's got the highest XG but other than Zaha of all midfielders in the game so far this yeah. season. That seems Zaha, wrong. That that's Zaha, crazy. So Zaha's had a uh, at least one penalty in there. So if if without that, Gordon might be top. But no, Gordon scored goals. There have been good chances inside the box. And if you look at his underlying numbers in terms of the the volume of shots over the course of the season, it's pretty high. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, if if you wanted a midfielder, it, so out of these three we've got on on the screen, there is an argument to go for Gordon and keep that sort of what's the price difference there? Around two point five million compared to the other two in the bank. That gives you the flexibility to jump straight back to Salah if you wish at some point. That gives you the flexibility to get Trent back in mm. or Trippier if he gets injured in a couple of weeks or whatever it might be. So yeah, I think you could really go. Uh, yeah, you could definitely go worse than Anthony Gordon, and he's cheap enough that if in those tough fixtures you mentioned, John, that are coming up soon for Gordon, you could bench him 
and play Nico Williams or play Andreas Pereira. And then you've still got Gordon to come back into your team mm. for that really nice run. I think it was around game week 12, 13 yeah. onwards, wasn't it? For a yeah, four or five games. 16. Yeah. I think, uh, so, look, uh, yeah. yeah so, sorry, I was going to say, I haven't got this graphic prepared. So this is about to look a little bit tiny on people's screens, but just to pull it up there, this is sorted in terms of, and you can't see it, it's on the, the tools section of Fantasy Football Hub. If you want to give it a crack, click the link in the description. You can sign up for free and have a click around. And if you do decide to sign up, it's 30% off at the minute. But I've sorted this by XG over this season. And Gordon is just behind Zaha, ahead of like, I just name a bunch of big names that really hit it home. A higher XG than like Salah, Sterling. Yeah. Rashford, De Bruyne, Pascal Gross, Odegaard, who's had a few chances, Luis Diaz, McAllister, Marsh, all of them, he's ahead of them, he's doing brilliant, Martinelli even, so, I don't know, that surprised me, which is why I'm sharing it with you, but Wes, let's have a look at a few shorter term differentials, um, we've had a look at the ones that we might like the fixtures of a bit further afield and whatever else, um, maybe, yeah, they all kind of fall into the same puddle really, but these guys are maybe shorter term, um, first up here, Isaac, 5.4%, um, seven million. Yeah, so Isaac, I guess he could be seen as long term as well. That's what I was going to say. Do you know? I was gonna... are decent. Yeah. But it, with with short term differentials, they can be. It's a benefit if they are also suitable for the long term because obviously we want to be targeting players who you can keep long term, but also short term. I think what he's we got meant... the best, best fixture, hasn't That's it? what I was going to say. I think what what we mean by short term differential it doesn't mean you need to get rid of them this week. It's no, more a case of. If you're trying to get a player in for the week, that's what we're saying. We're not saying, yeah. oh, they're short term because they're bad long term. We're saying, yeah, yeah, if you're yeah, going exactly. for a guy this week, yeah. Isaac has a great fixture. Exactly that. And if you're wild carding in a, you, the only reason to ever really look short term in FPL is if you do plan to wild card like the next week or within a Which a lot of, of people are. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are looking at the game with our wild card for sure. So yeah, Isaac, really nice fixture, nice price. I keep banging the drum about how it's tough. You know, you've got to really think about forwards this year. You can't really just sort of think, you know, in last season we could almost put in Dennis or Pookie and just think, you know what, there's no one better at that price range. Let's just take a bit of a gamble. At the minute, I think you really have to think about the forwards because there is, like I say, for me, Mitrovic and Haaland should be locked in your team. and Therefore, it's only one extra slot. Don't, do you go up the price bracket to Kane? Do you stay that mid-price range and go Jesus, Isaac or Tony? Um, so it is tough to fit them in, which is why I don't think I will have Isaac in my team, but I really wouldn't be surprised if he does well. Um, and yeah, he's still pretty much differential at 5.4%, really good fixtures and a really good short-term fixture. Bournemouth at home is the best fixture for any team, probably, John. Yeah, uh, I think it is. So, yeah, I would agree yeah. with that. I think so. Um, he's still 5.4 team, uh, the percentage there on the site. I was wondering, I think he's one that'll be rising quickly over the week. As yeah, people pop sure. wild cards and bring them in and whatever else. Because yeah. I'm seeing them everywhere. Everyone's obviously targeting Newcastle. Pope Trippier in there. And then Isaac's yeah. kind of the, the next guy who comes to mind. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if his percentage was a little higher later in the week. We've got Gundogan in here, who's 7.6 million. Again, I think it's just one of those ways where Cancelo, De Bruyne and Haaland. Yeah. And has just made Gundogan not even like a consideration. Even Foden's in around his price. And I think maybe we have this bias in our head where we think Foden's a lot more attacking. And maybe he is, but Gundogan ticks along. Yeah, and it's a real difficult one because with Gundogan, he sometimes plays a role for Pep where he is that midfielder that runs beyond Haaland. Like if you remember Haaland's assist this season, that's Gundogan getting into the box from midfield, Lampard-esque sort of style. And he's had got previous to that before, hasn't he? From when was it? Two seasons ago, I think, John? Mm. But we, which is, it always annoys me about like do I pick Gundogan and risk him being benched risk him getting subbed off on the 65th minute risk his role changing where he just sort of sits central midfield and doesn't get into the box when he does arrive in the box he's one of the best at getting on the end of uh, balls in the box and scoring goals two in game 38 last season he won them won them the league doing that off the bench um, and we've seen it so far this season so yeah there's that's why he's obviously lowly owned because there is that sort of question mark over him but I don't know, for, for myself, John, like I said, I need to replace either Pascal Gross or Sterling with either Gundogan or De Bruyne. So I might go there if I decide that I'd rather keep hold of Sterling long term and get Gundogan in place of Pascal Gross because I, I want to jump off Gross. His fixtures are bad. They've lost um, Potter, obviously. But yeah, if I was wildcarding like yourself, it, I couldn't uh, choose Gundogan because I'd already have three City with Cancelo, De Bruyne and Haaland. 
I'm going to just jump in very quickly, Wes, and do a quick plug. So if you haven't heard of Spitch, Spitch are bringing this to you. Uh, Spitch is essentially like, this is me going ad hoc here. Uh, so I'm just going to go for it and on my opinion of Spitch. Spitch is kind of like FPL, except a lot more actions on a pitcher's score. So you're not just looking for goals, assists, clean sheets. You're looking for tackles, shots, all the rest. Um, there's weekly tournaments, not just season long. And there are paid versions with big jackpots up for grabs. And on top of that, there's a great community of fantasy football hub managers over there already playing the game. Now, if you want to give that a go, do click the link in the description. Wes, the last one here, Watkins. I'm just trying to fire a song because I'm aware we still need to build a wild card. Um, Watkins, I've thrown him in here. I can't say I've ever really been into Watkins, but I was kind of looking at this week. I was trying to find differentials, firstly, that who were like under 5%, and I was also trying to find people with relatively okay fixtures. And at home to Southampton looked okay to me. And if anyone's yeah. going to get a goal there, it might be Watkins. Now, 7.3, one of the likes of Isaac Mitrovic, Tony's out there. It's probably not going to happen. But I just threw him in for a talking point because he doesn't get a lot of airtime this season. Yeah, I like Don't it. buy him. Don't buy him. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you uh, abused me for Bowen, so I didn't say for, uh, I didn't say for Watkins. Uh, no, like, like you said, he could... He, he could get points over the next few, and he is one of those players who is difficult to own. But it, you know his record in Premier League is okay. He has got Southampton at home, good fixture. Um, it's just like you said, with all those forwards out there, yeah, oh, I can't really go there. The Watkins and Ings rotation. I don't know what that's been like this season. Well, no Ings. Can I? I, can I it's been like. Yeah, go on. I'm just going to throw these at you. Just two things that kind of made me kind of go. Well, maybe the things that maybe kind of do that were. You know, whatever. He only got 24 minutes in the opener against Bournemouth. This was a long time ago, so yeah. nothing happened there. He's played He's played every minute every game since. Against Everton okay. and Palace, who you could look at and kind of go, okay, they're fair enough fixtures. He got returns. He got a goal and two assists over those two games. Since yeah. then, he played against West Ham. It was at home. West Ham weren't great. Maybe you could look at that and think that should have been returns. But Arsenal yeah. and Man City in the last two, and they actually put up a good fight against Man City, and it was a one-each draw. Yeah. And he's got Southampton, Leeds, and Forest in the next three. Chelsea isn't great, but then you have Fulham and Brentford. Newcastle, United, and Brighton aren't great either. But what I'm saying is, like, he is short-term. Fixtures are good. The fixtures are decent. Yeah. The fixtures have been tough-ish. I know it's one of those that there's better options, but... I don't know. It's differentials for a reason, uh, isn't it? And it, I'm glad you brought up Villa as well because it kind of brings someone who was popular pre-season and then, you know, has been transferred out wildly, which is why he's gone down in price. But Bailey is now, I think, 4.7 million. Mm. And Leon Bailey almost goes into that category of, instead of being 0.5 more expensive than Andreas Pereira or De Silva from Brentford, he's now pretty much the same pro- price. He's got at least, I can't remember his stats now, but he scored against Man City, that goal you're talking about. He got an assist uh, in an away game recently. So he has his minutes have been a bit patchy, but for a cheap, like I said, if you want that sort of solid bench over the next few game weeks, maybe you're playing a 4-3-3, your bench midfielders could be uh, Andreas and Bailey. And then you've got two decent options with good fixtures and are both cheap as chips. So you're not detrimenting your starting 11, but you're still having two good cheap options in midfield on your bench uh, if you need them. Um, so yeah, I like bit. I like that you bought a Villa for that reason. To be fair, I'm gonna just point above my head. There's a little mini league code. If anyone wants to join it, bounce in. We'll have a laugh, and I'm just gonna show it. It'll probably look a bit crap on your screen, but this is the current leaders team. This is Jack Sharp, Bruno's magic. I know last week nothing happened, so a bunch of zeros. But this is how his team's looking. He's forty eight thousand nine hundred and eighty second in the world. Um, so he's doing all right. I'm sitting in thirty fifth in our league. And our editor, Alex, is actually in 31st. I didn't realise he was ahead of me. I'm kind of embarrassed about that. He's terrible at the game. And then in 19th... <laughs> Wes, you're up there in 19th. I'm just saying Clip that because I'm always watching. <laughs> yeah. Clip that up and get it on socials. Um, so, yeah, you can bounce in this. The code's above my head. Um, and other than that, Wes, we have... We're going to build a wild card in just a second. But before yeah. that, we're going to do one more thing. Um, I'm just going to bring up the rules of our double up little league we're doing. Now, last week ended up null and void. I picked a couple of Brighton guys. Who did you pick in the end? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. I forgot it void off. Doesn't picked, matter. Uh, it was null and void. Couple of, I picked a couple of leads, a couple of leads mids. Ah, you um, did. You went like Sinistera yeah. and Aronson or something, did you? Yeah, or Harrison. Harrison yeah. 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 Um, well, this what we're doing, guys, and we've added another wee rule. We haven't put it here, but it's an, it's a it's a... What is it? It's an unspoken rule. The unspoken yeah. rule is that you can only have one player worth over 10 million because we worked out this week Kane and Son could be picked. So you can only have one 10 million plus player, 
below 1% top 10k combined ownership. So the two players have to be owned by less than 1% of managers in the top 10k, just to keep it differential. You can't use the same team twice in consecutive game weeks, so we can't just pick Haaland and Stones every week. That might have yeah. an under one. Do you know what I mean? We can't do that every week. And at the end of the season, one of us is going to shave our beautiful beard. Oh, God. Just display them to the crowd there, Wes, yeah. You know, that'll be gone. I actually look hilarious without a beard. This is actually, this isn't even a beard. You could call this a chin hider. This hides about 18 chins. Yeah. If it's slimming on me, I think you're probably a skinny enough guy but, anyway. Whereas you, I need this more than you, man. No, mine hides my pathetically looking baby face. Makes me look about 12 years old. So, which is an <laughs> idea when you're a 32 year old man. So, <laughs> Get we, we both need them. Yeah. So, th- this is what we have to do. We have to pick players. Wes, will I go for you first, or will I go? I'll go for you first, right? So, Wes this week has picked, yeah. uh, aka Heisenberg, has picked Isaac and Pope, who are owned by a combined total of 0.63 percent. And this is yeah. ballsy because you have a goalkeeper here. Don't know if we'll see that many times this season. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I'd go for that. And I think there's a decent chance of a clean sheet. I initially wanted Pope and Trippier, I think, but they were way too. I didn't realize how highly owned they were. Um, so yeah, I switched it up and went for Pope and Isaac. I'm basically, I'm trying to play the fixture here. I'm looking down the fixtures. Who's got the best fixture? Newcastle at home, clean sheet chance, goal chance. So maybe maybe both don't happen, but if one of them gets a return, the other one blanks, maybe that's enough to beat yours. Maybe. Um, yeah. But yeah, Pope, save points, bonus points. So yeah, I'm hopeful to get off to a victory. Mine could have been a lot different. I like yours, by the way, just to kind of look at yours again. I like it. I mean, I don't think there's much to say. Pope could definitely get a clean sheet. Isaac, we spoke about I think both are great picks. I've went for Kane and Dyer. Now, I probably, as we said, you could have got away with Kane and Son. I even felt that Kane and Kulisewski was a bit cheeky. Um, I felt that Kane and Richarlison might have even been a bit cheeky. I think it was definitely a better pick to go with another one of the attackers because they could haul here. But I decided to kind of keep, in, in the interest of kind of like, I don't know, fair engagement and being a gentleman, you know, playing and good sport and all that, I think Kane's like supercharged enough. So I felt, I'll pick a defender who's likely to get 90 minutes and pray for a clean sheet. Um, so Dyer came in, Kane is Kane, it's Leicester, they have looked terrible, one of the worst defences in the league, it's Kane, I think it's a no-brainer. I think yeah. secretly, we because we'd like to not pick the same guys, I think you kind of went first Spurs and then I poached them. Yeah, because um, <laughs> I, 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 pick, I picked the Newcastle guys and I was like, oh shit, I could actually get Kane and Son here. Yeah, and we the rule, but yeah, it's Spurs or Newcastle. I think were the, the good teams to target this week. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be close. I think Kane could just destroy me though, couldn't he? Just looking on his own, even with a sort of an Isaac goal, a Pope clean sheet, Kane could just obliterate that on his own. So mm. let's see. Yeah. I like my picks. Let us know who you think's going to win this week in the comments and also pop in your double up predictions. What two players would you pick this week who are pretty differential? We'll not hold you to the under 1%, but let us know. So, Wes, I think that's about it on t- other than the wild card. Am I forgetting anything yeah. we need to discuss before then? I don't think so. Let's um, do it. Let's do it. So, let me just make sure I've got this up. I do. Let's go over and build a wild card now. You're the expert. I'm interested to see what you've built. And then at the end, I'll maybe come in and let you know what I'm thinking differently. We'll fly, not fly through it, but I'll throw a few things in that I think are pretty just like, yeah, these are half the win. I'm yeah. going to, in fact, here's what I'm going to do, Wes. We're, we're, we're chucking the plan out the window. I'm going to put the non-negotiables into my squad. And okay. then we're going to, we're going to pick the others together. Does that okay. sound all right? Yes. So for me, I think Pope goes in and I think Ward goes in. I think there's no yeah. point in messing around there. They're in. I think Cancelo goes in. Yeah. I think Trippier goes in. Yeah, all in mind so far. They're both locked. I go into yeah. midfield. Kevin De Bruyne is coming in for me. Yeah. Uh, there might be another one or two there, but let me just go up to forwards because I know I want Haaland. Yeah. I know I want Mitrovic. Yeah. And then the third slot is half up for debate because we could yeah. very easily try and be a hero and go for like a Kane and go for a three-man, but I think that's a bit mad. We could... We could go for the old Isaac, who I think is probably a good pick. Uh, but there's obviously the likes of Tony out there. I think I'd be leaning towards Isaac. Fixtures, he he has he does have the better fixtures. Mm. Just on that, as you brought it up, I'll just say my little spiel on what I think about those two. With with Tony, you guarantee yourself ninety minutes game after game. You guarantee yourself penalties. You guarantee yourself he's more creative than Isaac. Well, you know, going off Isaac's Premier League stats is very obviously a small sample, but we know Tony. If you look at his underlying stats for creativity, are good as well. So you get that almost talisman player for Brentford. Isaac, what's going to happen when Wilson's fit? 
I, I, I don't know the answer to that. I literally don't know. Is Isaac going to be pushed out wider a little bit? Is Wilson going to be pushed out wide? Does one of them go on the bench? Does one of them get 60 minutes and the other one get 30 minutes? And therefore, both of their minutes are kind of hampered. I, I don't know. I have no idea. So I just feel like there's question marks with Isaac. And I, I still I think he's you. a good pick, obviously, because I, you know, I picked him for my double up this week. And I think we all do well, well this week. So over the course of a six, seven game week period, uh, is that going to be a transfer out waiting to happen if something happens? Whereas with Tony, you know, you can hold him and people are going to need their transfers to take out Arsenal assets, Man City assets mm. over the next few building up to that blank. So we can't be that flippant with our transfers. That's not me. I, I'm literally not against Isaac at all, by the way, but that's just sort of a an argument. Yeah, Brandon in the comments saying go Isaac, then game week nine, go to Tony. Again, this will look small because I haven't got these stats. I didn't know we were yeah. going to be debating this, so I haven't got it on a nice wee graphic. Yeah. But very small on the screen, but I've put Tony and Isaac against each other in the uh, Opta section of the tools on Fantasy Football Hub just to see how they stack up. I've sorted it per 90 because obviously Isaac's got three yeah. times as many games under his belt and over three times as many minutes. Isaac here per 90 has got a higher XG. He's had higher big chance, uh, big chances total. Um, more shots in the box, more shots on target, more shots in general. But it is a very, very low sample size. The only problem, yeah. like you can't really take much from this. Um, expected assists, Tony's higher and creating chances and kind of linking up play. And as you mentioned, the penalties locked is a is a biggie too. So I don't know. I'm kind of, kind of torn between the two. I do I do like Tony. Isaac's a couple little point two cheaper. Um, uh-huh. Have a quick look at their fixtures as well, John, just because I, 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 I do know that Isaacs are better, but how much better over the next sort of six or seven are they? And just whilst you're doing that, I'm just going to say that comment that said, I can't remember who said it now, but you just read it out about how go go for one of them this week, then transfer next week. If you're on a wild card, which this is, for me, on a wild card, always look to save your next transfer the following week. So you should be building a wild card team. You know, something can happen. You might need to use a transfer the first week. That's fine. But... Mm. For me, don't don't put someone in just for one week and then change them the following week. Just get the get the striker you want out of those two. Who do you want over the next six game weeks? Whatever the answer is, put that player in. There's no right or wrong answer to that, but don't book in a transfer on your wildcard. I think that's a big mistake, in my opinion. So what I've done is here, Wes, I've went over to the fixture analyzer on Fantasy yeah. Football Hub again. I've went to attack, which shows us the goals for yeah. um, prediction based off all sorts of things. I've just sorted by Newcastle and Brentford. Newcastle are predicted to get 9.2 goals, Brentford 8. Newcastle have Bournemouth, Fulham, Brentford, United, Everton, Spurs. We could even sort that up to right up to game week 16. If we're looking yeah. right up to game week 16, Newcastle's still top. Um, nice. Brentford below. If we're looking more towards the next five or six with an eight, yeah. we could change. You know, Arsenal, Bournemouth, Newcastle, Brighton, Chelsea, Villa, Wolves and Nottingham are good. So they're both actually decent, you know. Brentford yeah. have Chelsea in 12, Newcastle have Tottenham in 13, maybe Newcastle have United in 11, but I think Newcastle overall are maybe just a better team. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's kind of one of those. Who, who would I, I think, pick? I think fixtures-wise, it's a tick in the box for Isaac. Um, Reliability-wise, in terms of we know what we're getting from Tony, for sure, he's not going to miss a single minute, really, etc. like that spiel yeah. I just said. Um so it, that's what makes it a difficult decision in FPL when you have those 50-50s where there's a tick in the box for someone on the fixtures, but then the alternative's got okay fixtures as well. And then, like I said, the reliability for Tony, but then am I also being a bit, you know, overly scared about Isaac? You know, they've spent all that money on him. Surely he'll play a large majority of minutes. And we've seen from someone like Haaland, you don't necessarily need to be a 90-minute man to be a goal machine. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm back and forth on it. In my draft that I've actually produced for this but we don't have you know we're building one now I did have Tony but I wouldn't feel strong either way depends if, I, I guess it depends if you're more of a, a fixtures over form guy because Tony's off the back of a hat trick recently as well isn't he so yeah I, yeah tough. you're right you're right it, it is a really hard one I think um what I'm going to base this off and maybe it's up to up to it could change up to the deadline I'm doing that deadline stream I think I'll put Isaac in. If I use the four game week prediction, he's predicted to come out higher. And if I ever have a 50 50 in my head, that's always a nice wee kind of affirmation. Yeah. So, yeah, nice. Chuck it in. In terms of defenders, to bulk this out, we'll, we'll try and par through this way as I'm aware you yeah. have places to be very soon. Um, is there anyone I else I don't have here that's like should be non negotiable? I think Nico Williams, because of his price and what he yeah. offers. Again, yeah. we it, it's hard to call him like essential, isn't it? Because he's like a just cheap defender. But yeah, he wouldn't leave my. 
um, my wildcard draft, Nico Williams. I'm seeing Emerson, um, not Emerson Royale, Emerson, who's off at yeah, West from, Ham now. From West Ham, yeah. So for me, again, in the, in the draft I've done, I've got two 4.0 defenders. One's Nico Williams, the other one's Patterson at Everton, who's playing 90 minutes week in, week out. He's getting, he normally gets the odd shot here and there. I don't know what his stats are exactly, but watching games, he always bursts. He gets like one shot every game, bursts into the box. Eventually, he's going to score one. Um, but yeah, he's got a tiny bit of attacking threat and he's 4.0 plays every game. With Emerson at West Ham, uh, I just think, I think he's, I, I don't know too much about it. I could be wrong, but Cresswell, maybe there's a West Ham fan in the chat who can help us out a bit more. Cresswell, how, you know, I think he might have had a knock, but he could come back and take his game time. So I, I think I still prefer having that um, that nailed on player to come in for a two pointer like Patterson, who got a clean sheet against Le- uh, Liverpool. Uh, no Pickford is a real big shame for Patterson. But yeah, I mm. think I think Patterson's probably better. Someone just said Fafana at four point four. Great call. Uh, so, I actually yeah. like that, but you're benching him obviously for a week. Yeah, uh, but you're also probably benching him because of the squad you're going to be able to build. If you had Fafana over where in my draft I've got Patterson, it, it's only going to take up more but four more. And you will bench him most weeks anyway, to be fair, because you can have yeah. such a strong you can bench you can build a str- uh, a strong team with that and then have Fafana as a really nice sub. Yeah, I'll throw for fan in because I just like that. Yeah, but I suppose it. it depends very much on, like, if I'm stuck for cash at the end, I can go down and take the point three back. Yeah, I feel exactly. like I'm a bit light at the back here now. You know, if I want to go to Trent, I'm really having to sacrifice Cancelo, which I probably yeah. won't want to do if the time comes. So I feel like I'm maybe a bit light. But then we'll go and build the midfield and then see what we've left for the next slot. Yeah. Bowen's obviously been mentioned a lot with the likes of Madison. With there's a few other guys here been thrown about a lot. This is uh, this is your wild. Your de- you can't put Bowen in now, John. After earlier, I'm definitely not putting Bowen in. <laughs> I'm just trying to appease everyone so they don't yeah. kill me. Don't do uh, Martinelli's there again. The fixtures aren't great. They're turning. Yeah. Just oh, okay. What what I'll do is just the, the gaps that you've got. Like I said, you've gone for Fafano or Patterson Vine, so I'll leave him out. Reese James, I've got in my wildcard oh, draft yeah. as a. So I've got two players that I'd have to bench this week. So I haven't built like an optimal 11 for this week because I've also got Zaha in my draft. So Zaha, in my draft, would be Patterson, Zaha and Reese James on the bench this week. And it would mean starting Nico Williams in a good fixture and it would mean starting Andreas Pereira again in a decent enough fixture. Yeah, Andreas um, has to be there really, doesn't he? So Sorry, yeah, I'd put, I'd put Andreas as a, as a non-negotiable as well. Yeah. And also, you're building it on, on my team, obviously, from scratch. In your own team, you've probably got a little bit more money to pay with because you've That's probably it. got some of these at, at base price. Yeah, I could have imported my team to see the value and whatever else, which other people can do. If you go over here, if you click import your FPL team at the bottom, you yeah. type in your ID. If you want to know where your ID is, if you go over to your this page... Um, Sorry, your points page on FPL and take the little number yeah. that's up in the, the search bar. Um, I yeah, think the three so- midfielders are up for grabs because um, there's arguments against the, the ones I've chosen. Like I said, Martinelli, you could always, always make an argument mm-hmm. here if they've got tough fixtures, plus they've got, you know, you don't want to tie yourself into necessarily having too many Arsenal and City players if you've already got the triple City. So there's an argument to go without him. There's an argument to go without Zaha. He blanks this week. You know, is Zaha that essential? Maybe not, but I like him, which is why I want to keep him long term. Uh, and my, my other one would be Bowen slash a Madison type figure, or maybe an anti Gordon. Yeah, so, yeah. you pr- you're probably like I probably want someone to be able to transfer to Zaha if I don't take Zaha. I've thrown James yeah. in, which I didn't tell you, so I've thrown James in because I do want him. But that means yeah. that I'm starting Nico, Trippier, and Cancelo, uh, the three forwards. So we're we'll going for a three four three. So four of these mids are going to need to start. Um, yeah. Martinelli against Brentford. Mm, that game week 12 fixture creeps around and all of a sudden you're kind of shafted because of the triple city as well though yeah it, it's, it's really tricky this week because like I said yeah. if you, I'd be happy to go without Martinelli and have someone like a Gross or a Trossard blah 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 Rashford all these players these good mid prize midfielders but mm. a lot of the good mid prize midfielders play for teams who do not play this week um, right. I need to decide play, blah 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 so yeah so let me see if I was to throw the likes of a Martinelli in here 14.8 left for the other two mids. Um, I'm not going for Bowen based on everything I've said. I could go for... Uh, Gordon. Gordon. Go- you want me to stick Gordon here? There's no <laughs> way he sees the weekend. I'll put him in now, but there's no way he sees the weekend. Um, you, again, I'll be locking... Get- what you were liking those stats though, John. You were liking his underlying stats. I saw he goes in for today like as a mark of respect to how good an option he actually is. But... yeah. 
what I'll say to everyone watching is don't kill me yet. Come back on Friday when I lock my team in and you can yeah. see he's a good placeholder because I'm aware we need to be wrapped up by three here and we have quick fire questions to do unless yeah. you really need to get out I, the gap before then. I can stretch to about five past three, but then I, I literally have to leave my front door. Yeah, no, then, no problem. We'll 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 lock someone else in here in midfield. Who can I? I've got a load of money for. The, let me. You know what I'm going to do just for now, just to leave as a placeholder. Kulisevsky. Madness gives you that eight million price point. Now, yeah, no, it's just for the. Sorry, we, what were you going to say? Mate? I was just going to say, like, look, this is subject to a lot of change. Um, it's got a few differentials in, but we were talking about a lot of them. But I think, you know, Kulisevsky barely played minutes recently. He's due a game. Yeah. Uh, it's Leicester, placeholder for Zaha. Gordon, whatever, don't know about it. Martinelli, the only <laughs> risk there is the Martinelli and the Triple City blank in 12. Andreas De Bruyne, Hallam, Mitrovic, Isaac, and that defence are pretty standard, I think. So really where it gets mad in this, this one is Kulisevsky and Gordon. Yeah. So everyone, please did, shit on me in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> did, you say you're, uh, did you say you're streaming on... Friday for the deadline. Friday for the deadline. Locking in your wild card. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to nice. pop it now. I'm going to pop it after this and, and get yeah. building. But um, Nice. Yeah, cool. It's a good so, first draft. With wild cards, it's, always a, it's only a first draft. You don't have to lock anything in right now on a stream. So that's all good. That's it. I lock in on Friday in front of everyone. So yeah. come and join me on Friday and we'll all lock it in together yeah. um, and make some decisions. So, Wes, very quickly, we have to go in five minutes. I'm going to pop five minutes on the timer. Everyone, start submitting yeah. your questions. Quick fire. But Carr still holds the record. 53 questions he answered in five minutes. So, Wes, the more thought yeah. you put into each question, the less chance you have of breaking yeah, records. I will do that. So, just as people type in, I just want to say one thing that I've made notes I have to say about with the because Kulusevski has reminded me of it. Kane's nailed in right. Spurs have then two other attacking positions to fill: Son, Richarlison, mm -hmm. and Kulusevski. Well, I thought you know at the start of the season I would have said Son is one hundred percent nailed. Right now, Son might not be nailed. This weekend, it might be Kulu, Richarlison, and Kane. So yeah, yeah, just a little bit of trepidation with Kulu, Son, Richarlison. Who plays? Who shares game time? Kane's nailed, but the other three a little bit of a little bit risky. Kane's nailed until he goes to Bayern Munich, but that's for another day. Get your A and B style questions and yes or no style questions, and we will answer as many as we can. Well, Wes will in five minutes. I'm going to give it another 10 seconds for a few questions to pop in, then I'm going for it. Um, cool. We're only doing this for five minutes, so if you have any debates, get them in. That is Carl Urban I'm speaking to. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it comes up so much. I tweeted about it, and then someone replied to me saying, I'm like calling me arrogant or something. I was like, no, other people are saying it, you idiot. But it's yeah, not even so. like it's not even like he's that handsome. It's not like you're saying I look like I know, yeah. I look like this. I don't know, Leonardo DiCaprio or something. Yeah, he was actually the guy in my head. But then I was thinking to myself, is he that good looking? I don't know. He, he used to be a bit of a babe, didn't he? Back in he the did, day, yeah. Anyway, okay, DiCaprio or George Clooney to kick us off. <laughs> I'll go DiCaprio. <laughs> DiCaprio, Cormor or Vindaloo? Didn't even mean it, but go for it. Uh, it's got to be Cormor just because Vindaloo's too hot. Kulu or Bowen? Oh. Bowen. Double up or Green Arrow? <laughs> green Arrow for sure. <laughs> Bowen or Madison? Um, that is tricky. I'm swaying towards Madison, actually. Emerson, Patterson or Nico? Uh, Nico. Nico, sorry, yeah. Madison, Zaha, Bowen. Pick one. Uh, Zaha. Um, they're all the questions are about those. Apparently you look like Giroud. Emerson or Fafana? That might be you. Uh, say, say again, sorry? <laughs> Emerson or Fafana? Fafana. I'm a little bit worried about Emerson's game time. Kaelin Saka or De Bruyne and Isaac? Uh, De Bruyne and Isaac. Yeah. Emerson or Nico? Nico. Bailey or Barnes? Uh, Leon Bailey or Barnes? Bailey's obviously saves you a lot of money, so Bailey. Trapped uh, out for Trippier with a minus four? Yeah. I'm doing something similar. Yeah. Kane, Kane captain this week. Who captain? Kane. Yeah, if you've got him at home to Leicester. I, hard to look past Haaland though, isn't it? Son captain this week. No, not. He hasn't got the form. There's a little bit worried that he actually might get benched and only play 20 minutes, so no. TAA on a wild card. Uh, get rid of him. Get rid of him, but it'd be nice to have a price point there for him to come back at some stage. Yeah, someone like Reese James or Cancelo provides mm. that pretty much with a bit of money in the bank. Start callback or a minus eight for Bailey. Not it's a minus essentially eight. an extra minus four for the Bailey part, I'd say. Yeah, uh, yeah, surely must mean that. Um, unless he needs to do multiple transfers, but yeah, no, just 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 play a callback, get you one two pointer. Bailey's not worth 
a minus four, let alone a minus eight. Red or brown sauce? Brown sauce for sure. Half time pie or pint? I'd be red. I oh, really. Oh, I think we had that one before. Yeah, I think um, we did. Yeah. <laughs> that really turned into a big debate. I think. Uh, <laughs> was it half time pint or pie? Pint or pie? Pie. Pie. pie? Sure. Yeah, me too. Doesn't surprise you. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Madison and Vardy or Kane and Bailey? Uh, Kane and Bailey for sure. Yeah. Possible to not have Alan. Can you get away with not having Haaland all season, or is that just suicide? Suicide, do not do it. Get Haaland in for sure. He's amazing. Bail- Bailey or Andreas to start? Uh, to start, Bailey has got Southampton. Doesn't he? I'll say Bailey. Bowen or Z- Saka? Uh, Bowen. Klopp or Pep? Uh, oh, Klopp. Get Perisic, question mark? Mm, a little bit worried about rotation, but he is an amazing asset when he plays, so I could could bite me on the arse that one so yeah I don't want to advise against Perisic best six and a half mid that isn't Martinelli or Tough, lower like, like I said they're all not playing this week if you can afford to have them not playing this week maybe a Leeds mid maybe Pascal Gross still maybe Trossard um, one who's playing this week yeah, I don't know it's too tough Guinness or Budweiser uh, probably Budweiser Guinness sorry John sorry, Messi or Ronaldo <laughs> Messi for sure, hundred percent. Diaz or Sterling? Uh, I was I, I was sort of in the mindset of just answering it like a football question there. Uh, <laughs> for for FPL, Diaz or Sterling? I, I, I do prefer Sterling. I know he's a little bit more expensive, but mm. yeah, I might have to get rid of Sterling myself, which I'm a bit annoyed about. But yeah, Sterling. Bailey or Andreas? Might have asked that. To, to start this week, I'd say Bailey. Long term as a bench player, I do prefer Andreas. But like, yeah, they have a similar price now. So yeah, both really good bench option players for the long term. Get rid of Raya. Get rid of Raya. What Brentford keeper? Yeah. No, no, no. Paris well, or Trippier? On a wild card, obviously go Pope or something. Say again, sorry. Paris or Trippier? Trippier. Guys, if you're enjoying this, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, KDB and Isaac, or Kane and Bowen. The first one, yeah, KDB and Isaac. I think KDB's a great choice uh, for the next few weeks. He's well, been quite lucky not to get more returns. Sorry, John. Go on. No, no, I'm trying to speed you along just for you, but uh, <laughs> for your your right. ego. But I'm slowing you down now. Uh, Chelsea to improve under Potter. Yes. Sure. Odegaard as a punt or differential for Martinelli. Uh, maybe. Uh, no, not. I wouldn't transfer Martinelli to Odegaard. I still prefer Martinelli out the two. Haaland or De Bruyne as a captain in game week eight? Haaland. Ollie Watkins, yes or no? <laughs> uh, <laughs> prefer Leon like I said. No, <laughs> Just say no. no. No for me, no for me. Gross and Salah to KDB and Kulisevsky for a minus eight. Uh, yes, with the caveat of what I said earlier about Kulisevsky maybe being a bit of a risk game time-wise. And Zaha or Anthony for the final one? Uh, Zaha for sure. 37 questions answered, Wes. 37. Oh, that's that's, that's decent. And I slowed you down. I asked you some silly ones. I I, I, I did this last night, uh, yesterday to Bacar as well. I was too slow. But yeah, um, I, I couldn't. I, you sometimes have to give a little bit extra than a one word answer as well. You do. But look, it's been an absolute pleasure, everyone. There's over 600 people here, which is great to see. Please do drop that like in your way out. It helps us big time. Uh, and subscribe. There's another podcast coming on the channel tomorrow from the Green Arrow lads. And then on Friday, I'll be doing a deadline stream, um, wrapping up my wild card and submitting it, um, talking to you all, answering some questions. Might have a guest. Who knows? So thanks for being here. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>